Okay, you guys wanted to see how I, how we design things. Um, so I'm gonna show you this here. This is the Oni Demon. I'm gonna show you a little bit of the process behind this one. Um, if you wanna know about the mythology, I can make that in another video. Um, but this is the program I use. This is called ZBrush. <clears throat> this program is just used for digital sculpting, 3D modeling. Um, I use another program for rendering. Uh, you can see that it has kind of a metal material here, but I don't really use um, ZBrush for like a final render. I would use Blender or Keyshot for that. Um, so this is the end result. So I kind of have, if you look up Oni Demons, you're gonna have a million different kinds of masks. The one that I made, I uh, was kind of going with a ornamental look to it. Um, also, I'm not really gonna, I can make a couple tutorials on ZBrush, but I'm not going to make like full tutorials because I, I'm still learning myself. And so there's probably gonna be better, better methods out there. I'm not gonna have the best stuff. So let's see. So this piece is actually composed of a couple different parts. So I have this, this piece up here. I have the uh, horns and then I have the face, the eyes, the teeth are actually individual as well. So what I started with was the face here. So I'm gonna go back a little bit. This is gonna take a second because it has to go through all of um, every detail that I've sculpted, every every line I draw, every time I uh, press the, the pen on to my drawing pad, it'll actually create history. And so I can actually go through and cycle through all every bit of history that um, like from when it was first, uh, from when it was first a sphere, because that's what everything starts as. At least that's what, for the most part. So I'm gonna wait for this to load here. Um, I'm gonna show you what it looks like before I did any detail. So it's still going here. Yeah, you can see it looks pretty, pretty creepy. What I normally do is I start off with a really low resolution. I'm gonna go into solo mode here. Um, so it starts off as, as this sphere. So after a little bit, I just kind of get like super, super basic shapes with a very low resolution. <clears throat> um, and then I just slowly increase the resolution as I'm going. You can kind of see this active points here. Um, that's what I'm displaying on my screen. So you can see as I go through it, when I first started down here, 2,800. And as I get more and more of the basic shapes out, I'll keep increasing the resolution, you can see. Sometimes I'll go, I'll go um, make it a high resolution and then turn it back to a low resolution because I, like, I figured out that I missed something or I didn't like something. So you can see it's taken a lot of different shapes here. I first had four horns um, and then the, the teeth were coming out um, from the bottom as well. I don't, well, I guess I did keep that, but yeah, you can see the horns took quite a few different shapes and the nose and the eyes. So I've kind of, you can see that I've removed detail, added detail. <clears throat> so this was, this is what I would say is like my concepting stage. You can see that I'm still working with a pretty low resolution here because I'm still kind of making those basic shapes. But this is kind of where I started to get more and more detailed. So what this is right here, um, this is called masking the, you can see all of these black lines here. It kind of looks like I painted over it. What that's doing is, I can actually show you really quick, is I can sculpt everything except for what's masked. 
so you can see I can I can sculpt all these pieces but nothing that's masked those black lines are not moving at all those are gonna stay in place so I'm just gonna undo that but I'll show you the reason I'm doing that in a second so for the ornamental details I'll basically mask everything out and there are also a lot of stages here there's a lot of things that are moved put back there's a there's kind of a long stage there and I kind of skipped over that a little bit on accident so what I did was I sculpted everything or I, uh, I masked all of these ornamental details and once I was done with that I'm gonna inverse the mask so everything else you can see that everything just gets flipped um, yeah right here so <clears throat> I flip the mask and what that does is it it means that I can actually sculpt those those details I can sculpt in them but instead of like with my pen going over and drawing everything um, after I mask it out and then reverse it is I would actually inflate it um, I'll show you what that does Let's see if I can get it to that point okay so what I would do after I reverse the mask it's just which is just control tap on the outside of the mesh um, there's this inflate button up here. I I didn't use just the regular inflate. If you go down, everyone's tool menu is gonna be different. Um, just the way that I have everything laid out, deformation and inflate balloon. That kind of gives it a rounded look. If I just inflated it, um, it would be a little bit more squared off. And I guess I can show you real fast. So if I, Oh no, it's, there we go. Yeah, so you can see that everything kind of has a very hard edge, but that's not really the effect that I want. I want it to look more of like a, an ornamental detail. So if I inflate balloon, see if it'll let me do that. There we go. <clears throat> you can see everything is a little bit more rounded off. So what I would do is start with that and then um, go over it and I would actually use the pinch brush so I'm gonna pinch that turn down my draw size and I basically go over it and kind of I'd go over every single one of these details and kind of make them come together like a like a tent and you just kind of point at the top. So I would do all of that. I would go through every single one of these details, use the pinch brush, and that kind of just makes it look a little bit more sculpted. Uh, sculpted as if it was like from metal instead of using clay, I guess. Because <clears throat> that's kind of what this is like, is using clay to mold and form things, but... Anyways, once I was done with all of that... I started sculpting the horns and everything. And that process is a little bit different. Uh, that's not just... That's not just, um... Me pulling out the horns and... I made that a little bit of a different way. So <clears throat> what it actually looked like when I first started it was, was this. Let's see if I can go back a little bit. Okay, <clears throat> so this is what it what it looked like in the very beginning. These are called Z-spheres. What these Z-spheres do is they're kind of like armature. You can 
move each of these individual balls around to get very, very basic shapes. Um, so for the horns, I kind of just started from the middle here. And I do this while, I, while I'm looking at the head. <clears throat> so I'll put one in the middle, kind of pull it out, make each one of these, make like a super, super basic shape for the horns. And then I'll basically turn it into an actual mesh. And then you can see it's a very low, low resolution here. Um, then I start actually sculpting it. <clears throat> and that's eventually what you see. I can't show you now because I just deleted it, but no, I'll let me go back to this. So yeah, I started sculpting on all these ornamental details the exact same way I told you I did with this. And here in the final mesh, you can see where I've pinched everything. I did turn everything back to a little bit lower of a resolution just because I am 3D printing these. Uh, when I'm 3D printing them, the slicer software that I use, which is uh, Chidu Box, well, I use Prusa Slicer and Chidu Box. Um, one for supports, the next for actually 3D printing it and slicing it. It doesn't handle super high resolution meshes very well. Uh, that's the same with Blender. Like I said, ZBrush is a, is a special program uh, for doing this kind of thing. So it's used to having very high resolution mesh. So you can see it's 840,000, which is still pretty dense. I could probably lower the resolution quite a bit more without losing detail, um, but there's a little bit of a special process that goes on with that, so I'm not gonna go too, too much into that. So you can see here that I kind of took that Z-sphere, pulled it back a little bit just so that when the necklace hangs, it's not lopsided. I want it to hang evenly. And I still wanna, I carved out the back here a little bit. I want to put something there. I'm not really sure what yet, so haven't really gotten into that. But the rest was pretty basic. Like this piece of the lip here, I actually didn't, I didn't use mask or anything. Well, actually I did use, use a mask. I kind of went over it like this, reverse the mask, and then used the inflate brush, kind of pull the pieces out a little bit. I just thought that looked kind of cool. <clears throat> um, I didn't really go with, I, I was kind of just drawing a mask. I didn't like it, undo, kind of draw it. Maybe, you know, just kind of go through things, delete them, like I said. Uh, this little face here, I didn't spend too much time on this, but I kind of did the same thing where I would mask out an area, reverse it, pull it out with the move brush. Um, and then just start sculpting on it so that it's not affecting anything else in the background. So that was kind of easy, but I didn't really put too much time and effort into the face because it is going to be very tiny. So, yeah. But it looks like that is pretty much it. Uh, once I, once I kind of had all these pieces sculpted together, I basically just, uh, use an operation that combines all of them, it gives me this, and then I start sculpting it a little bit more, um, and then decrease the resolution just a little bit, just so that I can 3D print it. <clears throat> but I did 3D print this one already, and the details look really, really good. Uh, one thing that I haven't been good at with the, with the jewelry that I really would like to get better at is making the detail large enough for it to actually come out in the piece because I can 3D print it with all this detail. And this one I did a good job at, I, I was more conscious of it this time. But with a lot of other pieces like the Anubis piece, I made a lot of tiny, tiny details and I didn't really um, pay attention to like the fact that I'm going to be 3D printing and casting it because those details are a little bit harder to get out in the, in the silver and bronze and all that. But this one, the details are going to come out really nice. Um, Anubis, they will still, it will still come out a little bit, not as clear as I was hoping. But again, I'm I'm working on that.